Hey, good morning. I'm nearly done refactoring and modernizing the voxeling code. There's definitely more cleanup and refactoring to do, but today I wanted to show a little quirk that I came across during cleanup. One of the areas that I refactored involved cursor logic, and that's the logic that enables block creation and destruction. So the code was slammed in the middle of the main user interface entry point, so I moved it to a dedicated cursor class. And the, the logic uses a ray tracer to determine which block to highlight and thus you know indicating where creation and destruction are going to take place. So if I click the left mouse button we create a block or we destroy a block and the right it creates. Now watch what happens if I try to create a small batch of blocks. Okay that works. But what if I do spanning this row and adding the next row? Oh, well, it just does the first row. So something is going on there. Let's jump up here, and we'll continue creating with the grass textures, and we'll see what's going on. All right, if I do that, oh boy. That's fun. It actually replaced the one behind it. Oh, and it even replaced underneath because the same logic is broken. So let's try to do this first. And then we'll try another row spanning operation. Yeah, it uh, just created that first row. Okay, <laughs> let's look at the code. I'll just leave this open for now. All right, so here's the main tick callback in our cursor class. Tick is called on every frame of the game, so whenever the, the browser is about to draw another frame. Um, let's see, so here's the ray tracing logic that runs if a hit is detected. Specifically, this conditional here runs if we detect a hit in a block. And here's the logic that figures out what to do with that hit location. Right now the hit locations go into float64 voxel hit. And let's ignore shift right now. That really just um, provides a way for single button mouse users to create blocks because they can't right click. So if they hold shift and left click, it's the same as a right click. But let's focus on focus on action too, and of course ignore this conditional here or this commented code here. Uh, <laughs> so the logic here shifts the hit detection um, in the direction of the face normal. So normally we have block highlighted here, and if I hold shift, you can see what it does. It shifts the hit detection to the face normal. That way it highlights a block adjacent to the current one, allowing you to create at that location. So you can't create blocks out of thin air, but you can create blocks next to each other. And that's good enough. So I use the term normal here, and I'm speaking uh, in terms of the physics normal, where like the face is a plane, and the normal is a vector that runs perpendicular to that plane. So let me show an illustration, or I'll just uh, explain it. So here, the normal to this top face would be going straight up along the y-axis. Consider the normal the y-axis. Here, it would come out to the side, horizontal to this side block face. So that way, if you know, that's it selects the block to the side of it, or it selects the block to the side here or above or I don't have any blocks nearby to do below, but that's the same thing. There we go, so there's some normals going on over there. And yeah, my cursor is off a little bit. I have to adjust that logic too. Like I said, so much to clean up. So this function runs on every tick, the start of every frame. So let's, what, let's consider what happens when the mouse button is released to figure out where, that, where the logic is broken. So if the mouse is released, 
action two would be false because action two corresponds to the right mouse button being pressed. So once the right mouse button, right but mouse button is pressed, action two is true. And if the mouse button is released, action two is false. So if we release the right mouse button to complete our creation operation, it becomes false, and it fails to shift the hit to the normal and instead sticks with the actual block that the ray, ray trace landed on that it hit. So that could potentially drastically shift, and it does drastically shift the location that we're operating on, or at least one of the locations. So this actually causes two kinds of edge cases. Uh, we saw the one where it fully skipped the creation of a row, and then we saw where some blocks behind were unexpectedly modified. That's due to it falling back to the hit location. So we may start creation at a normal. And then if when we release the mouse, it falls back to the actual hit behind the normal, then it's going to be modifying that block too. So that's why it changed the block behind the one where we wanted to create. So if I add this little bit of code, previous action two keeps track of the previous state of the mouse button, the right mouse button in this case. So this, this allows us to detect changes in mouse clicks. So we can um, trigger the start of a creation selection. I may not have explained it, but I can um, hold down the right mouse button and then drag as a way to create larger regions. Um, so that's why I need to track the previous state. So once we take into account the previous state, this logic will work as expected. So right mouse button is pressed down, triggering a shift to the normal. And then we move the mouse a bit maybe. And then when the mouse button is released, this will no longer be true, but this will still be true because previously the right mouse button was created or clicked. Okay, and that should fix our logic. So once I save this, I will build again. And I will, ooh, wrong direction. I will refresh the game. We'll see what happens. Let's um, let's get rid of some of these. And let's hopefully create. I don't want that one. I want this one. All right, let's go back up here on our perch and try. OK, that doesn't no longer modifies the row behind. And that correctly sticks to the normal when you release the button. OK, I think we're good. Um, yeah, I think we're good there. Let's try it from other angles. Looks good. All right. So that was just a little quirk of um, ticks versus state and how it can be a little tricky to figure out what's going on. But yeah, hopefully that was entertaining, maybe educational, probably not, but maybe just entertaining to watch what happens when you don't consider all the possible um, expressions in your conditions. All right. See you next time.